Sorry we're getting this out so late. We've just been busy with yeah. Homecoming. And we have a surprise for you since this is our Homecoming special. We decided to review Oz the Great and Powerful since... It's James Franco. No, <laughs> it's James... No, our theme for Homecoming this year was Wizard of Oz. Yeah. So... We might review the Wiz later on. Just let us know if you're interested. Yeah. So that was Oz the Great and Powerful. Honestly, that was okay. You know, we finally picked a movie that... Might have been okay. <laughs> yeah, this is so weird. It's I, so, not like the nut job where it was just hilariously bad. <laughs> this one was like legit, like yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, so it's a somewhat backstory to another to the Wizard of Oz, and of course they can't do any references to like Wicked, but they can refer to the old the movie. But um, James Franco basically plays. A guy with a stage name, Oz. Oscar. Oscar. And he travels to Oz and has to defeat the Wicked Witch, which people will say is Glinda, the Good Witch, but it's actually Theodora. Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis, who turned, spoilers, turns into the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. Um... Again, like, I don't think this movie would have worked with anyone else's Oz. Because James Franco is charming. He, he's kind of handsome, too. Yeah. No, he's charming as the Wizard of Oz. It's play by numbers, you know, liar revealed, prophecy story. Yeah, we all love prophecies. But again, it's actually a decent movie. Yeah, I, uh... I appreciate it that it didn't, like... Like, it knew its target audience. Right. You know, children, probably teenagers. And children such. teenagers who think The Wizard of Oz is the worst thing ever. This is going to piss off a lot of fans of uh, either Wicked or Wizard yeah. of Oz. Because if you know the stage show of Wicked, you know that it's the Wicked Witch of the West is Alphaba. That yeah. here she's Theodora. Uh, and it's still Glinda, but again, it's there was a I don't would you say there was like a lot of callbacks to like the original Wizard of Oz film or no? Kind of, not really. I think the way I, that the opening scene shot is like probably, it's a callback because it goes yeah. from a small screen like the original to a wide screen when they get to Oz, right. which. It's callback, but it's one that works. Yeah. It's kind so of like I, its own independent thing, pretty much, right. I feel, which, great, you know, sometimes you need that with all these yeah. connected universes and such right. these days. Um, yeah, like, I think everyone did fine in this movie. James Franco was obviously the best part. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I did have an issue with is oh, the metaphors. Like, oh, okay. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Because I pointed that out uh, when the little China doll girl came mm -hmm. on screen. Because uh, Flynn or F Finley, I think is his name. Yeah, Finley. He's Zach Braff's, you know, sidekick in the movie. That's a metaphor for how he treats the real life like version of Zach Braff within like the first five minutes. He even calls him a monkey in that opening sequence too. Yeah. Uh, the China girl is obviously the girl that shows up to Oz's performance in the beginning of the movie who's in a wheelchair and you know wants to walk. My whole thing with that like that's just like a awful situation for everybody involved. Yeah. And like uh <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> like, and then Linda obviously is the metaphor for the girl Oz, you know, the blonde that basically Oz has an actual attraction to. Yeah. And, and then Theodora is 
the chick that was supposed to be the farm girl, the farm girl yeah. during like the magic show. Mm -hmm. So like those metaphors were really obvious and like you know hammered in like did you get it type uh, of thing. Here's which, another, yeah, it was very obvious. Another thing I had an issue with was a couple things. Uh, the CGI. At times it could be good, but yeah. man, it was it. That lion towards the beginning of the film. Oh, the lion! I, I, I don't know what to say. And it just like like uh, that's obviously fake. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't prequel Star Wars prequel bad, but it was, it was bad. At, bad. It was pretty bad at some yeah. times. And then it had like stunning shots of, you know, just landscape shots, just beautiful. Oh and yeah. What's the other issue you had? And my other issue get back to me <laughs> yeah um <laughs> at times the writing can be really hokey but again like again like the actors are doing fine it's pretty well directed and I like that there was a few moments where I was like oh that's actually pretty funny like, yeah no it was pretty yeah there were some moments like that and oh. you know what I I can't really fault the movie yeah. for, you know, cheesy lines, because, of course, I, I think this is, hold on. Is it PG-13? No, it's PG. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it was directed by uh, Sam Raimi, who, if you don't know, directed the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, so. Pew. 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 Um, yeah, so, like, the cheesy lines, I get Oh yeah. Oh, I just thought of another callback though. What? The part where he gives them like gifts at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's at the very end yeah. where it's just like, you're just like, okay. We gotta shoot him or another thing in. <laughs> but again, like, it's like movies like this, and I want to compare it to an actual good movie, Rogue One, where yeah. they do callbacks to previous Star Wars films that. It's actually a pretty decent story that you just are willing to overlook it. But, again, like, not a whole lot that I can complain about. It's... Yeah, we picked a pretty decent movie yeah, this time around. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, I don't have much else to say about it. I don't know. Do we want to give away our next film? I don't know. What, I know Halloween. I, it's Halloween month. It's Halloween so cheesy one a cheesy one or Medea. Medea. well don't know we'll brainstorm we'll brainstorm yeah we'll brainstorm uh again we were busy this week with homecoming stuff. we were busy with homecoming and we figured we'd get this out near the end of homecoming yeah. which is today and um yeah so this that was our review of Oz the Great and Powerful if you want to see it go for it I mean if, if you're generally yeah. curious, just go for it. it. Was it that bad, Nolan? No, honestly, it wasn't. I'm yeah. surprised. I was like, oh, gosh, it's James Franco, Wizard of Oz. It could be crap. Came out kind of liking it. I wish Seth Rogen was in it. Oh, my gosh. That would have been great. <laughs> he would have uh, been... He would have been Cowardly Lion. <laughs> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Oh, oh let's oh, go oh. to the green city. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let's, yeah. Uh, um, social media? Yeah. Follow me on Twitter at the Nolan Vogel. At the wire underscore machine. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a review in next week. I don't know. We might take a break because it's midterms. Midterms. Next week. So, we might be back, you know, probably with. Yeah. Since we'll be back on next, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. We'll get back on our recording schedule eventually. We will. Um, we might do a double feature just because we're going to miss a week. The Wiz. Well, Homecoming will be over. We might have to review it another time. <laughs> All right. Take care, and we'll see you in a week.